This week on Choice Hacking. I think Trader Joe's is the best example of how the world should be constructed. You can't have everything, but anything we've got is worth having, and we make your life simpler. That's Mr. Choice Paradox himself, Professor Barry Schwartz, talking about his love for the Trader Joe's experience. Now, if you're not familiar with this brand, Trader Joe's is an American grocery store chain that has about 500 locations. To call it a cult brand is maybe to underestimate people's love for Trader Joe's, or as it's sometimes called, TJ's. I'm Jennifer Kleinhens, and you're listening to Choice Hacking, a podcast about applying behavioral science and psychology to business, marketing, experience design, and more. Join me today as we unpack the psychological and behavioral science principles that helped Trader Joe's gain a cult following, and how you can apply some of their strategies to your own brand. Before we get started, let's give a shout out to the company who helps bring you this podcast, Audible. Are you headed back to the office? Back to the gross commute? Yeah, me too. And that means for me, lots of trains. And for you, it might mean more time in the car, walking or sitting on a bus. And that's the perfect time to use audio like this podcast or an audio book to learn more, be entertained. Visit choicehacking.com forward slash audible and you can get a free 30 day trial of Audible Plus. It's a service that I use, I love, and I enjoy it, and I'd recommend it to anyone else returning to a commute, taking a road trip, or even just spending a rainy Saturday cleaning the house. That's choicehacking.com forward slash audible. Now, on to the show. For my listeners who are outside of the U.S., you can think of Trader Joe's as the Aldi of yuppie food. So it's mostly store brand, and their selection includes things like organics, gluten-free, international flavors. But you'd probably consider Trader Joe's to be a step above Aldi, for example, in price and quality. It's a small store with a tiny footprint when you compare it to the size of a normal American grocery store. A Trader Joe's building is only around 15,000 square feet which is about a third of the size of the average grocery store in the U.S. But in that amount of space, Trader Joe's outsells all other American grocery stores per square foot. In fact, it makes 200% more revenue per square foot than Whole Foods and 330% more than a Walmart superstore. Columbia University researcher Dr. Sheena Iyengar, whose research focuses on how people deal with choice, puts Trader Joe's success down to its limited choice. She told Freakonomics Radio in 2018, quote, Trader Joe's doesn't overwhelm me. It usually gives me just a few choices per domain. They don't overwhelm me with choice, which is why you're more willing to examine each novel choice. The store only has 3,000 SKUs or product options compared to the 35,000 or more SKUs of an average American grocery store. But why does limiting the number of products in their stores actually increase Trader Joe's sales? It's down to a behavioral science principle known as choice overload. Again, we have spent a whole episode dedicated to the choice overload principle, but in case you need a refresher, this principle describes the human tendency to be attracted by just enough choice, but then to become overloaded if we see too many options. In fact, too much choice can cause anxiety, disappointment, and even depression in some cases. In 2019, a survey of UK customers showed that 83% of online shoppers had abandoned a cart because they felt there was too much choice and they were overwhelmed by the available options. Time and time again, studies have found that too many choices were overwhelm, but just enough can drive sales. Research from Northwestern University found that there are four predictors of when and to what degree choice overload will appear. First is choice set complexity, which just means how confusing and complex the options in front of you are presented. So for example, if there's 200 items on a menu with 50 ingredients each, 
but there's no picture, no manager special or most popular dish, it can be really hard to choose or even compare your options. The second predictor of choice overload is something called decision task difficulty, which just describes how hard the actual act of deciding is. So in other words, choosing between a hot tea and an iced tea isn't that hard. But choosing between two new jobs in two new cities is just a tiny bit harder. The third predictor of choice overload is preference uncertainty, which describes how much you know what you want. So obviously, it's easier to choose something off a menu, for example, if your favorite dish is pepperoni pizza and the cafe only has one type of pizza, pepperoni. But if you go to an Italian pizzeria and you don't have a favorite kind of pizza or a specific craving and there's 50 kinds on the menu, it's much harder to decide between your options. And the last predictor of choice overload, according to the researchers at Northwestern, is the decision goal. In other words, what's the ultimate thing you're trying to achieve by searching through all these options? If you're making a decision that you can't walk back that might be kind of high stakes, like moving to a foreign country for a new job, then you're more likely to have choice overload than if you're just buying a new sweater. So this is all great, but how does Trader Joe's reduce choice overload? In a few ways. First, they give customers fewer but better options. So as I mentioned earlier, Trader Joe's carries about 92% fewer products in its stores, yet it creates 200 to 300% more revenue per square foot when compared to Whole Foods and Walmart. And not only that, but Trader Joe's carries fewer size and flavor options for each product. But these options also aren't your run-of-the-mill grocery items. No, they're cult favorites, like their formerly $2 wine, affectionately called Two Buck Chuck, or Everything But the Bagel Seasoning. It's obvious from these stats that the choice overload effect bears out. The right amount of overall options gets people in the store, but fewer product options on the shelf means they convert, so they buy at a higher rate. But would customers convert at as high a rate if the items at Trader Joe's stocked weren't high quality? Well, probably not. So that's our first lesson. Reduce your options, but don't forget to have good quality options. The second way Trader Joe's controls choice overload is by never having a sale. So that's right. It might sound like sacrilege, but Trader Joe's does not run sales. They don't have reward cards and they don't even do coupons. So week after week, customers know what to expect and they always feel like they're getting value for their dollar. But more than that, they know that they'll never have to do complicated price comparisons or couponing to get their money's worth. It's fewer dimensions to compare a product on, which makes it a simpler choice. So that's our second lesson. Don't forget that pricing is a part of how customers make a choice. When you make prices, coupons, or rewards programs overly complicated, you're adding to the dimensions people have to compare products against. So now it's not just apple juice versus orange juice. It's apple juice with double rewards points, but minus 30% because I have a manufacturer's coupon. But maybe I should come back in a few days because they usually put juice on sale on Tuesdays. You can see where I'm going with this. So straightforward pricing creates a better choice and customer experience. Let's talk about the last way that Trader Joe's helps reduce choice. They don't let brands fight over shelf space at the expense of the customer experience. So if you're not familiar with how grocery stores are stocked, the retailer tends to sell space to each food or drink brand. So for example, Coca-Cola might pay more to be put on an eye level shelf right next to Pepsi, for example. Brands jockey for product space. They might buy advertising in the store like a display at the end of the aisle, And basically, there is a hidden war going on in the grocery store that most customers never see. So to avoid that whole mess, Trader Joe's almost exclusively sells store brands, otherwise known as generics. It allows them a level of control that very few stores have. It means Trader Joe's can reduce not only the number of products, but the sizes, the flavors, the colors, and the brand options that exist. And they're actually making customers happier in addition to selling more of its own products. So 
how can we take the lessons of Trader Joe's and apply them to our own businesses? Well, first, smaller physical footprints don't mean fewer sales. Sure, economies of scale exist, but oftentimes being smaller means your brand is more nimble and you have more control over the customer experience. Second, clear upfront pricing can help customers make better decisions faster. While sales, rewards, points, and loyalty programs definitely have their place in the marketing mix, if your customer experience offers something beyond low prices, you won't have to depend on those tactics. In the long run, being too promotion-focused can erode your brand. But if you elevate your experience, you can avoid an expensive race to the bottom. And last, fewer but better product options can create brand fanatics. While having fewer products is probably a good thing for most brands, there also has to be a relationship between quantity and quality. There are countless behavioral science and psychology principles that support what Trader Joe's and other successful brands like Apple, Netflix, and Google know. When in doubt, simplify. Thank you for listening to the Choice Hacking Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please consider checking out my book, Choice Hacking, available on any major internet book retailer in an audiobook form on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. If you're interested in learning about more ways big brands apply behavioral science and psychology, you can join our free newsletter at choicehacking.com forward slash subscribe or our brand new YouTube channel. Yes, finally, by visiting choicehacking.com forward slash YouTube. Until next time. I hit record it, Jap, you can't ignore it. I'm transforming now, these cars and planes, I'm always boarding. Just out touring down in Charlotte like I play for Hornets.